Good afternoon, everyone. As you can already see, that we will be doing the brake booster delete in my 97 Integra. I currently have the 92 to 95 Civic um, setup. So I'll go ahead and start taking everything off and swap this out and then bleed the brakes. So let's do this. First things first, go ahead and remove the uh, brake fluid. Um, I use these battery acid filler type of deal. Looks like one of those turkey baster deal. So just find a little container, suck all the fluid out. That way you don't have a lot of them leaking once you take all that off. So like I said, the acid battery filler deal, I think they were like seven bucks on AutoZone. So that does the job. I'll go ahead and start taking all that fluid out and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, once you get the fluid out, you're gonna be taking off these two lines that's going to the brake master cylinder, which are these two lines right here. Um, you just need an open wrench. Um, I would highly suggest you spray some PB blaster or something like that to get it out. Um, and don't strip that, that nut that holds the brake line. Um, I'm, I currently have both of them off now, just kind of letting it drain a little bit before taking off this master cylinder. Um, just make sure you be careful on getting that on your paint. If it does, don't let it sit there. Wipe it off or wash it off real quick um, with water and soap or else it, it will eat your paint. So just kind of be mindful of that. So I'll go ahead and start taking off the master cylinder, which looks like two 12s right here. These two nuts. And then we'll get this out. Um, we do have to take it off from the inside as well too, which is that big brake booster so all right let's go ahead and do that and we'll move on to the next step so i got the uh, brake master cylinder off um go ahead and you can take off the uh the vacuum line that goes to the brake booster as you will be um deleting that so it'll kind of free up a little bit of space um where that thing is connected you will be capping that off which i do have caps which i will show you what that would look like um, we're going to be taking off the cover um, to do that. So um, once you get that thing off, the next thing we will do is remove this brake booster, which we're going to need to be inside for that one as it's going to be a little bit pain in the ass to get to. So let's get to that one. So to get the, uh, the brake master or the brake booster off, you'll be taking off these two bolts, which are 12 millimeter. And also, beside it would be these two right here. If I can get it to focus here real quick. Right there. There's one. And then two below it. Um, like I said, they are 12 millimeter. It's kind of a pain to take that off. But once you get it out, it's pretty easy. Um, you do have to release. Let me double check real quick. The cotter pin. Which is also another pain in the ass to reach. Which... See if I can show you real quick. It's what holds the pedal right there. So you're gonna be taking off that cotter pin and releasing, pulling that pin out, and then this whole thing can come off. So go ahead and take off that 12s first, and then we'll move on to the cotter pin. So I got the uh, cotter pin removed. As you can see, that's pretty much free play so you can pull that brake booster off the pin just slides out once you take that cotter pin off um, I was gonna take this out but that's gonna be my next one now I just want to make sure that cotter pin and that pin comes off so once you get these four out you'll be able to pull the brake booster off oh yeah show you what that pin looks like here is the pin right here so and then you can reuse the cotter pin that you took out or you can pretty much put a new one. Don't really matter as long as it's there. Alright, I just kind of want to show you. Um, it took me a while to figure out what kind of method that I was going to use to take this one bolt off. Uh, kind of a pain, but I have a little wobble extension, so that one's kind of a pain to reach. They should have made a nut that goes the other way. 
but we are home stretch on taking this brake booster off but I just wanted to show you that you will run into this problem of reaching it but you can pretty much figure out a easier method for you but I have this wobble set up just enough to kind of angle out so I got that out and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the brake booster off let me see if I can take this off with one hand so bear with me here might have to hopefully I can move that without taking that clutch line off there it is it's gonna have to wiggle it out a little bit might have to move that out of the way but it's pretty much almost out so I was able to take it off without damaging anything so just do like a quick wipe down just to make sure there's no oil in there and then we'll go ahead and put our plate in um, I'm hoping that thing is easy to put on so we'll find out how difficult it is but I will guide you on what I encounter so let's do this the kit will come with assortment of bolts obviously the four long ones are what's going to hold the plate on the firewall two short ones would be the one that holds the wheel wood setup so you have locking nuts a couple of washers so it, it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point um, you won't need to do anything with this one for now so let's go ahead and assemble everything um, we will be putting on the uh, the wheel wood to the actual plate since the screw has to sit right here inside which bolts onto the firewall so I'll show you what that looks like once I get everything mounted this process is not necessary um, but I did put a little bit of um, grease on the lip of the assembly so I can slide the rubber in um, that way it kind of helps seal it a little better and um, this rubber doesn't have any uh, type of struggle going in because it is pretty tight fit um, some people don't put this back on but I prefer to have the boot on just to keep the dirt from going in there so yeah just put a little grease on it just to help ease the installation so let's go ahead and do that I also went ahead and added a little bit of grease on the opening so it's not dry rubbing on the rubber boot so like I said it's not necessary but you can do however you feel like you're doing yours but since I had grease figured might as well add a little bit of a safety deal so yeah just a little bit of grease goes a long way first things first go ahead and mount it um, it was a 13 mil for the nut so obviously there's six washers use two and then the nuts are locking so kind of snug it but don't go too crazy just kind of feel for it um, that's the first step you have to do um, we're gonna go ahead and mount um, the reservoir tank put a little bit of grease on that o-ring as well so it's not dry rubbing um, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with the clevis because it looks like I will have to buy one so once I figure all that out we'll keep proceeding with the installation hopefully I can use the old one but we shall see so I was able to take off the factory clevis um, I was able to use it with the jam nut right there so it's pretty tight so you kind of have to um, shove it in there a little bit but overall that way you don't have to buy another one which is I believe 20 bucks for the same exact style just from Willwood but like I said that's a stock one so you can buy the aftermarket one from Willwood or you can use the factory one whichever you want to decide on Alright, I went ahead and installed these two fittings, um, normal 14, tighten it up, don't over torque it. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do the lines. Um, I might go this way, I'm not sure yet, but once I kind of have an idea, I will share it. And if you do yours that way, cool. If not, you're going to have to figure out how you'd like it to be ran. but. Let's go ahead and kind of decide on what we're going to do. So I'm going to try different options and different methods. Um, and hopefully that works out. So here's what I came up with. Um, I have used the two small of the same size length um, braided line. And I used the long one 
to kind of ride underneath. So um, you can do it however you want, but I'll be zip tying it right here so it doesn't go anywhere. But like I said, you can do it however you want, whichever fits your, your needs, I suppose. But this is how I fit mine. So it's going to be, uh, I'd say, mounted like that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure out how to, uh, how I'm going to tighten this thing. What I might do is I'll wedge in one of the uh, Allen head or star keys right here so it'll lean up against underneath and then try to tighten it from the inside. So, so I ran into a little bit of issue that took a little bit long to um, figure out how to do, but um, obviously if you're by yourself, you're kind of going to have to do it a little bit with a little bit of thinking. So I went ahead and put a little bit of um, tape into it. That way when you're inserting the nut from the other side, the bolt won't come off or slide off or anything like that. Um, obviously this will be easier if you have two people here, but since I'm by myself, kind of makes it a little bit hard. So yeah, just put it in there and then kind of use one hand to get the nut started and somewhat tightened in there. Um, I'm going to try to do it by myself and see if I could tighten it by myself. So we'll see. So I was able to tighten it by myself. Um, being that the nut was um, those locking ones, um, you technically don't need two people for this one. As soon as it grabs from the other side or the inside of the vehicle, it will kind of hold itself in place while you tighten it from this side. Um, as you can see, I pretty much tightened this thing by myself. So you really don't need two people for these, although it would have been a lot easier if there was two. That way they could have been holding that and you don't have to put a tape. But I'm doing this by myself, so I kind of have no choice but to do it however it is that I can make it work. So uh, it's taking a little bit longer than I expected. Um, I'm going to go ahead and prepare it to be bled. So I went ahead and filled the brake fluid. So it's already at max. You're kind of going to need a funnel for this one. So you don't end up messing up your paint. So I got everything mounted. I did the one man brake bleed method. Um, you can find a lot of videos on those on how to do that. Um, they are kind of a pain in the ass to do by yourself because you have to constantly go um, and check it just to make sure there is no air bubbles or the, the fitting or the hose didn't pop off or anything like that. So I pretty much got everything done. I just need to take off the old brake booster vacuum line and then figure out what I want to do with this one so it's honestly almost done so I'm gonna test the brakes hopefully it did bleed if not I'm just gonna to have to borrow a friend's um, brake bleeding tool but hopefully it works so I don't have to kind of dick with that so that's where we are so far I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up so everything is done I got everything kind of zip tied together so um, I did go ahead and cap that brake booster vacuum from the old one since you won't need it uh, so I got everything done guys um, got everything bled um, zip tied together um, I already got the old vacuum or brake booster vacuum uh, port capped already all it all it was is a 3 8 um, cap so, but that's where the lines are. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put back the cover and kind of spray it down just to make sure there is no brake fluid anywhere under there to kind of wash it off. But overall, it wasn't too bad. It was just kind of a pain doing it by myself, but it is doable with only one person. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, I already did um, put pressure on the brakes, so it did bleed, so that's a good sign. I already got everything up to the max. So, hope you guys like it. If you guys have any questions, give me a shout. Click subscribe if you'd like. And please uh, give me a thumbs up. And hopefully, it helps you out. I'm getting ready to test drive. Uh, just kind of make sure the brakes are doing its job. But it does look a lot better. So, hopefully you guys like this video. Like I said, please click subscribe. Or if you give me a thumbs up. That is the end result. Looks a lot better than before.
I just got back from the test drive. Um, I just kind of want to give you my input on the feedback of this um, system without the brake booster. Um, you do have to press on it a little bit more than normal because um, you are applying the force within your foot um, without any assist from the brake booster. But overall, it's not too bad. Um, just don't expect to uh, stop on a dime if you are following too close to somebody. So I would highly suggest not to do that. Um, but overall, it does work fine. Um, I do like it, and I do like the space, um, saving that they provided. Um, it does look good in there as well. So in a few days, I will be checking up on it just to make sure there is nothing leaking. But it is still at max, so that's a good sign. Um, that's pretty much it.